and 19, it, t- it talks about worshiping the Lord, but then it says praising God. And this particular form of the word praise means to be clamorously foolish before God. So that means when we are clamorously foolish praising God, that means sometimes we will have an undignified praise. That means sometimes uh, things will boil over on the inside of us, and we will praise God so fervently um, that it will shake the heavens and that a supernatural, uh, sporadic yet intentional sound will come forth in the spirit that will then develop our authentic language of love for our Father. And when we push out that language of love to him, then he releases his prophetic language, his prophetic instruction unto us, and then we as his mouthpieces are able to release that to the people of God for answers and directions and instructions that will set them towards a life of prospering. Because it says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So God will establish the thing, but as we, his prophetic people, as we, his prophets, positions our, position ourselves carefully, then he will allow us to speak his words and help his people to prosper. And so that's why it's important that we are bold about what God has called us to do and that we learn how to prophesy faithfully. That no matter what is going on in our situation, that we tap into the purposes of God as we are living a lifestyle of fasting and praying, as we are living a lifestyle of praising God fervently, as we are living a lifestyle of positioning ourselves firmly in the things of God, that we are then able to prophesy faithfully and know that as we prophesy faithfully, as we stand there and declare that indeed we have a word from on high, that indeed we have a word right now relevant and a rhema word for anybody's situation, whether it be the pastor, whether it be a neighbor next door, it's when that happens that we are able to really cause his people to prosper the way that he has intended for them to prosper. And then after all is said and done, what do we do again? We praise him some more fervently and we worship him, knowing that as we prophetically worship him, there will be a prophetic race that comes about that will help us move forward in the prophetic things of God on a regular basis that it will become easy to us, that it won't be a lot of, a lot of struggle, that there won't be a lot of anxiety about whether or not God is speaking to us, whether or not we have the right word, that as soon as we open up our mouth, bang. Prophetic grace is there to carry us through. And that's the goal of this prophetic mastermind. I want you to live a life that is so pleasing to God that you understand exactly what sphere of the prophetic you're operating in, that at any given time, whether you had to think about it or not, if I say, hey, Deborah, can you prophesy to so-and-so? If I say, hey, Tamala, can you prophesy to this person? Can you give them the word of the Lord for this specific situation that you will be able to do it immediately, without anxiety, without thinking about whether or not you're going to hit it or not? Because, again, prophecy is really what many of us <laughs> who have been seasoned it in the prophetic say is just really low-level prophetics. Because everyone should desire to prophesy, to prophesy, prophesy, because prophecy is preferred if you go look at 1 Corinthians 14, okay? But there's power in authentic prophetic worship. There's power in authentic, pure prophetic worship that comes forth, because authentic means to be genuine and real. And when we uh, worship God with deep respect and awe towards him, he will cause us to walk in a new level of prophetic. Thanks for your sowing into the media ministry of Elder Juan H. Olson Ministries. We pray this word will penetrate your spirit and cause a divine shift in your destiny. Visit us online at DuanOlson.com and GlobalPropheticInstitute.com or call us toll free at 877-595-9117 extension 3. Manifold blessings be upon you.